Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another rocket science video. This is part four in the series. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, you might want to go back and do that. This will probably make a little bit more sense if you do. Up to now in the series, we've looked at the history of aerial rockets and done a bit of testing to see how rockets work in DCS. Uh, we looked at firing Hydra 70s from the A-10 and FFARs from the A-4. Today we're going to finish off the A-4 by looking at the 5-inch Zuni rockets. We're going to go look quickly at the results of some testing we did on the range in Episode 2, and then we'll make a site depression table, and then we'll go out and try using Zunis against uh, some targets. So let's get started. So to summarize what we've been doing and what we've found so far, we've been talking about the fact that rockets are different than bombs and that their trajectory has effectively two parts. Close range, their trajectory is flat, and in that range, you basically aim them at the target, pull the trigger, and regardless of your speed or altitude or dive angle, they go straight to the target. At longer ranges, they start to act more like bombs, falling away from that previously flat trajectory, and they require to use a different aim point, one that does depend on speed and altitude and dive angle. At these longer ranges, the rockets also tend to exhibit more dispersion, meaning they're really not as accurate. So, clearly, for these reasons, it is much easier to use rockets in their normal range rather than in their standoff range. Much of the last couple of videos has been about figuring out what the normal range is and how to determine when you're there. It's pretty straightforward in the A-10 because we have a HUD and a CCIP pipper and the range is displayed on the screen. It's a bit more involved in the A-4, especially for the FFARs, but I think we came up with something pretty decent. Um, the one thing that I think we learned about the A-4 FFARs is that the normal range is probably a lot shorter than you think it is. But I also think we managed to show that inside this range, they're pretty effective, both in terms of accuracy and effect. So today we're going to take a look at the other rocket on the A-4, the 5-inch Zuni. Recall from the first episode that this rocket is a successor to the World War II era HVAR rocket uh, with improved range and accuracy. In episode two, we did some range runs with the Zuni, where we basically aimed at the target and then fired the rockets as we flew in, observing how the impact point changed with range. As we did with the FFARs in the last video, we can review that footage and build a site depression table. Um, I'll spell you the gory details this time and just skip to the results, which look something like this. As you can see, the basic pattern that we have been seeing is preserved. There's a flat part of the site depression curve where we can basically aim directly at the target. And then there's a bit of a long range tail where we need to aim off in order to account for the decelerating and falling rockets. Unlike FFARs though, the Zuni normal range is quite long and even beyond this range, their dispersion is quite tight. So using the data from that chart, we can create a site depression table for the Zuni that looks something like this. Note that I did the runs at 20 degree dive angle, but I am including a line for a 30 degree dive angle by assuming that the normal range is the same regardless of dive angle. And the important number on both of these lines is actually the release altitude because basically the procedure for using ro any rockets, but for Zunis in particular, is to roll in at a dive angle, know the release altitude for the dive angle, and then release once you pass that required altitude. If we do it right, we will not need any site depression at all. So let's uh, go out and give that little hypothesis a try. Okay, so here we are back at Kobaletti rolling down the runway in our forever free A4 loaded with uh, a combined payload of FFARs and Zunis, but today we're using the Zunis. So we'll just get took off here. And I'll get myself set up and we'll talk about what we're going to do. gear up and the flaps up, get up to climbing speed here, and we'll hang right and head out towards the general sort of range area that we use. So 
So once again, we're flying the A4 rocket test mission that I put together, same one as we flew when we tested the FFARs. Um, maybe we'll try some different targets this time, though. Eh, why don't we start off with the uh, AAA battery? So the AAA battery is marked out there. You can see the blue smoke. We're turning in on it now. Okay, it's a battery of 40 millimeter anti-aircraft guns with um, like a CP kind of uh, vehicle in the center. So one of the things that I think we're gonna find here when we do the Zunis that's uh, I think interesting to talk about um, is that because we can uh, attack targets at a much longer range, um, another factor starts to come into our ability to use them accurately. And that's just the fact that we are using an unmagnified open site uh, to try and launch these things. Which means if we're trying to hit a point target, like say a vehicle that's about say three meters wide, at a range of 3000 meters, that's gonna be one mil on our site. Uh, which is pretty small um, and pretty hard to even line up the site uh, with that degree of accuracy. So that's actually going to start to be a limiting factor. Okay, let's uh, let's dial up a minimum altitude here, or maximum altitude. I think you're going to pick 4,000 feet, which is a bit more than what we'd use for 20 degree dive, a bit less uh, than what we'd use for 30 degree dive. Let's see what we come out with here as we uh, roll into this guy. And it looks like it's going to be between 20 and 30, maybe close to 30, so that uh, altitude warning is going to be fine. All right, now we just got to get ourselves lined up. Stay below the target so we hear that uh, altitude warning. There it is. Let it come up to the target, and there. That looks like a pretty good grouping right in the middle of that uh, AAA battery. But as you can see, even uh, at that range, we were kind of inside the 3,000 meter range, uh, but it was still pretty hard to see anything but the center vehicle, which is actually a much bigger target. So as I said, you can get a uh, standoff with Zunis. But your accuracy is uh, really going to be limited by the fact that you're basically using an open site. Okay, well I think we've had our way with that AAA battery, so why don't we check, uh, pick another target this time. We're going to pick uh, an infantry fighting vehicle platoon. It's made up of BTR-80s, but it also has uh, Ashilka in support. So I think it's uh, back a little bit here. There's the green smoke. Okay, so uh, again, you know, given the way the DCS models uh, the effects of weapons like the Zunis, you're going to have to get pretty close even to a reasonably lightly armed vehicle like a BTR-80 uh, to be able to kill it with a Zuni. Um, and they're not very big targets when you're trying to pick them off at uh, 2,500 or 3,000 meters, and I, I'm finding that that's really the biggest limitation. It's not only you know, my uh, visual acuity being able to see them, but even being able to hold a sight picture consistent to one or two mils, um, that's, that's pretty good flying. So uh, it does get to the point where, uh, regardless of how much standoff the weapon has, um, with the sighting system that's available, it's just only so accurate you can really be, I think. Okay, rolling in, let's see what we can do with this IFD platoon. Pull out, get below the target, start to come up to it. Waiting for that altitude warning. Our friend the Shilka hasn't, there he goes. There we go and break. That was close enough to be exciting. And we did manage to get close enough to the BTR to do some critical damage. And I'm jinking here. Because even our uh, 
AAA battery isn't dead yet, so it stays active. Yeah, you can see they're taking a shot or two. Just to continue to make life exciting. Well, let's go around and have another crack at that IFE platoon. I think we could see where the Shilka was, so maybe we'll try and take him out um, directly. So you can see that, you know, when it comes to something like the Shilka, it's pretty much a dead heat between the, the rockets and uh, the AAA who's going to fire first. Um, you know, that could easily go the other way if that, uh, if that AAA had been a little bit more accurate. So we still don't really have enough standoff to make us really safe uh, from something like a Shilka. And coming around for a second pass is a little bit of a death wish. We'll see what happens. A little bit easier to see the target now that we got the smoke. I see the big fat shilka at the back of the pack there. And we're rolling in. So one thing that I find really does my effect, affect my accuracy with the rockets is uh, how much stick pressure I'm using. I find that uh, even a little bit of stick pressure can really mess up the aim. You don't have to mess it up by much to miss the target at this range. Uh, and, and interestingly enough, forward pressure seems to be a real problem. It seems to mean I fire high a lot. He misses again, gives us a shot, and he goes down. So, just a little, another little bit, literally, of Russian roulette there. Um, yeah, as I was saying, uh, stick pressure really will uh, spray the rockets all over the place. I mean, if you're trying to get a group that's really, you're trying to be accurate within about 5 mils uh, at this range, if you want to get within, say, 15, 25 meters of the target, um, even a little bit of stick pressure will affect where the rockets go, and I find if I push on the stick, I end up uh, with the rockets actually going higher than the sight. Um, so yeah, you really need to practice being quiet on the stick uh, if you want to deliver the rockets accurately at this range. Okay, I think I've had enough of those guys. Maybe we'll try one more target here. So let's see, what do we want to go for this time? Why don't we go for the outposts? So this is a series of uh, bunkers. So this is a series of bunkers that are protected by, again, some uh, 23 millimeter and some 40 millimeter anti-aircraft. So you can see the white smoke there. We're just going to take a line up on those bunkers and see what Zunis can do against bunkers. Okay, so you know this is going to be our last video on the A4 rockets. We've done the Zunis, we've done the FFARs. I've learned a lot about how to use them better. Uh, probably going to have a video on a mission coming up sometime soon where we actually sort of fly a real mission with Zunis and see... Uh, See if we can make them work in some kind of real-world scenario. Still lots of ground to cover in rocket science. I want to go back and look at the Sabre. And I owe you guys an episode on Russian rockets, so uh, we'll keep working on those. All right, we're nearly rolled in. Once again, stay below the target. Wait for the signs. Wait for the signs. There it is. Let the pipper come up. And away we go our friends with the 40 millimeters to our right are still taking an interest. All right, well, that worked out pretty well. And I got to tell you, I managed to hit the bunker, which is, I've flown this target, I don't know, 10, 12 times. Eh, I only actually get the bunker about one time in five or six. So um, Zunis can crack bunkers, but you got to be a little bit lucky, I think. Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode of Rocket Science. Uh, hopefully that's helpful to you. For now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.